when on. someone says, I need to pee, we all know the pain that it is. And yeah. we are all very tired. It's hard to sleep, especially on rough weather. It's hard to eat. It's hard to cook. Everything is hard. And uh, going for a pee takes so much energy. I mean, if you have, you know, in your head, the battery of your phone, you know, with a percentage, I mean, doing a pee takes at least 15 or 20 percent of your battery off. It is so tiring. And you know that when you're going to arrive in the cockpit and sit down again, you're going to be like, oh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> like if you just ran a marathon. That's, that's a good, I think, a good idea of yeah. how life aboard is yeah. hard oh, when it's rough weather. That's right. And uh, how everything you do is, I mean, even just lifting your hand sometimes is uh, like, oh. Mentally and physically stressful. Oh, yeah. and you mentioned cooking. Oh, yeah. Before we left, we had like a plan and a menu for the Tuesday, the Wednesday, and Thursday, the morning. And, 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 you know, and pasta with pesto. How many days did we follow the plan? Uh, zero. zero. <laughs> 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 we had ramen noodles. Ramen noodles, <laughs> Breakfast, <cup of> <laughs> lunch. <laughs> and ramen noodles and, and cup of soup. And, and ramen and noodles. If really the weather was and really sweets. bad... We just had candies because it's a sugar rush and that's about it. And crisps. crisps and and crisps. crisps. Yeah, bless yeah. crisps. And, and cookies. And lots yes. of water. We had, uh, we had an, so I, I want to do a special thank you. So we had, uh, we had this, this oh, there is a, a girl yes. called Lucy and uh, she's, she's part of the team with us. And before we left, it, it may seem completely, you know, weird, random. but random and, and not really important. But before we left, she came aboard to say bye and good luck and all of that. She's supposed to join us uh, uh, later on. And um, and she gave us, she said, here is some emergency snacks. And it was a pack of candies and some cookies and ginger cake. And it was not much, you know. And we were like, oh, yeah, thanks. You know, it's very nice of you. And we just stole them on the Suddenly, at some point, I was very tired, very hungry, and feeling very weak. And then... It a little lamp went in my brain and said, oh, cookies. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, oh. God bless Lucy. Please, Lucy, thank you, thank you, thank Lucy, you. Lucy, your emergency rations you gave us were the best. It they was were, really emergency had, used, and we, it was life-saving. Well, we had lots of people give us lots of uh, uh, kind words and give us gifts before we left, and we, we had yeah, a lot of different things. But, but Lucy, your emergency rations was the best of yes. everything. Yes. I mean, it was special, perfect. special, special thank you. Yes. If yes. anyone cross us when we're in a, in, a, in a marina or something, bring us pack of candies. Yes. <laughs> because that's the... It's so cheap. It's it's so easy to do. And oh, you'd never think... It, but yet yeah, you'd never think. But it is actually a life-saving. At some point, we were, you know, hands shaking <laughs> because... You don't have the energy to cook. The boat is rumbling, mumbling around so much you can't even cook. And then you're like, what do I eat? Crisps are nice, but they don't have this sugar hit and this, this instant energy when you're really feeling weak and struggling to, to have strength. And then you take a candy and it's like... <laughs> and yeah. it's... It was, it was it really was brilliant. I mean, if you know anyone around you wanting to go for a sail or if you're sailing yourself, preparing for a passage, candies, 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 candies. I mean, that's... Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we, do, we carry them on the boat. But, um, yeah. So having got around the Cabo San Vicente in this 24 hours of rough weather, the, the weather settled pretty well then and yes. um, we started to get into a little bit more traffic as we're now heading um, it, uh, uh, across the Portuguese and Spanish border and heading towards the Bay of Cadiz. And the sailing was really nice. We had some lovely sailing boat was whispering along um, it, it was good and, and, and the traffic was all pretty good it wasn't yeah. too much sun shining, um, playing yeah. card in the cockpit yeah. because the boat was oh, so yeah. settled it was Play really lovely cockpit, yeah. was that was cool wasn't yes. it, yeah it was nice I, th I think I've, I've got to two more anecdotes in mind um, Yes. Go so ahead. in the Cabo San Vicente we said that uh, of course the weather was rough and uh, we had 24 hours of really rough weather and it's quite funny because it started um at the end of the afternoon, roughly, mm -hmm. and I remember uh, one or two hours earlier, John was saying to me, oh, yeah, the wind should be lovely tonight, and I think we're just going to put the big Genoa up, drop the mainsail, put a fishing line behind, and have a nice quiet night. <laughs> and then in the middle of the night, when we were all like squeezing in the cockpit and uh, just being cold and tired, 
And I just looked at John and I said, John, what a nice fishing weather. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it was, I think that's how it shows really how the weather forecast was really planning something nice and chill. And we actually had a really rough weather. We, we, we then arrived in, in Cadiz Bay. You missed something, John. Oh, what have we missed? Oh, yes. How can you forget that? See? Three brains. Three <laughs> brains just being part of each other and forming one big one, remembering we, everything. So we're, 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 we're sailing along quite happily. And, um, that was the rough no, night. It was the rough in, night. It was the rough night in Cabo San Vicente. So we're sailing along and it's a rough night. Not coming quietly. Around the, <laughs> coming, around, coming around the Cabo San Vicente and uh, I thought I was going to uh, be able to do a little piece to camera, a uh, sort of cockpit update. And so I said to Mill, can you pass me out the, uh, the phone that we do our recording on? And which she did. And obviously we're running under red lights inside, so it's not as good as when you've got bright white, white lights on inside. We run all red lights in, on the interior of the boat during the night, so it doesn't spoil anybody's night vision who's on watch. And so she reaches down into a little box on the end of the nav station where the phone is. It's got uh, one of the EPIRBs there and various other, yeah, various other, yeah, yeah a sort of a jet flame lighter for sealing ropes and one or two bits and pieces. Anyway, reaches down, grabs the phone, lifts it out, and as there was a scarf in there, and as she lifts it out, the scarf comes with it. The corner of the scarf catches the switch on the EPO and flips it on. And I see this light go blink. That was the EPO. Now I'm not sure whether it transmitted or it was a, a, um, a self test. I didn't know how far the lever had gone. So, a bit of a panic moment. Right, better get hold of Falmouth Coast Guard. So we get on the satellite phone, we look up their phone number, get on the satellite phone, and phone South Falmouth Coast Guard and say, with you, we may have accidentally set it off, but we're not in trouble. The guy was super, super nice. He was very helpful on the phone. I mean, it's just typical Falmouth Coast Guard. They are the best. And he was lovely and it was all recorded. And then uh, a little bit later on, on the VHF, Matilde uh, shouts down to me, John, I was in the cockpit, you shouted up, didn't you? That's right. Um, they're talking on the VHF about a rescue here, coming to rescue and take people off the boat. Do you think that's us? <laughs> well, it transpired that somebody else in the area had set their EPIRB off, and the Portuguese um, uh, went to rescue went to re them. Yeah, as he rescued, gone out to rescue them. And it wasn't anything to do with us. But yes, that was another uh, another incident. I think, I think that, that also showed how... Um, so for those who knows about know about sailing and you can quite happily um, sail 35 40 knots of width you know with the, with the right sails and, and the right boat and you know right equipment it, it's it's quite okay uh, but the conditions and the sea uh, the sea is not you know eight meters long swell it was short aggressive and 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 very um not very much space between the wave and um and that makes it really rough and really hard and um and I was, I was getting a bit upset um, with John in the cockpit because I was like, this is very dangerous to forecast a 10 to 15 nice, you know, nice sailing on the, on the weather forecast map. It was showing green, it was showing all beautiful. And then it turns out to be actually a bright red. And I said, um, we, we have a very, very good boat. I mean, bless her, we could hear she had a very strong beat down. I mean, the waves, we were inside and the waves were bashing on the side and you could, you could hear big bangs of the waves. It's actually quite impressive and you can feel it. You're in your bunk and you feel your entire bunk shaking because a wave just smashed it. And I was saying, this is so good. We have a good boat. We have a very good captain. I mean, bless him, he was brilliant. I mean... We would have not done it. Yeah, we would have not, not yeah. survived without yes. him and that's 100% sure. And a uh, lot of knowledge here, a lot of courage a lot of everything and um and, and just and we were a good team well. yeah being calm and being just yeah. yeah and very very good captain we've got um and we were a good team as well all working together all trying to do the best that we could with what we had and the mental state we were in as well because i mean i'm not afraid to admit that sometimes i was really scared <laughs> i mean i <laughs> cried i cried i cried at some point so Maybe, maybe she's going to be upset with me for saying it. Probably not, actually, knowing you. But at some point, I was in, my, in, in a bunk, and she was on the other bunk. 
and we, we sat down and I was in my bunk and I was all cold and I was all shaky and just saying oh my god we're gonna die and I was just crying quietly and then um, I was and then the a bit, same in yeah, my bunk and then a bit later she said uh, so I, I stood up to, I don't remember for what and um, going to the loo yes <laughs> that was the one I stood up and she said are you okay and I was like yeah yeah and you and she's like I've been crying for an hour I'm scared and I was like oh you should have said we would have been in the same bunk hugging each other because I was doing the same thing on the other side um, but yeah it, it was scared and scary and we had a very good captain a very good boat in this area but I imagine um, you're a good sailor but you're not very used to offshore sailing or you have some good knowledge but you're not extremely good and you see a green zone and you're like oh yeah cool I'll just go for three or four days offshore to train or whatever is your intention and uh, the green turns out not only a yellow, not an orange, but a bright red. And, I mean, if you don't have the appropriate boat, um, if you don't have the, the right set of skills, if you don't have the calm attitude that goes with it, um, and if you're not really used to it, because, I mean, John has done a, a bit of sailing and is more used to it Just than us. Just a tad. <laughs> Just a tad, yeah. And um, then... It is life-threatening. I mean, we were fine because the boat is good, the captain is good, and we did our best, and it was very uncomfortable, but it was okay. But I imagine someone with less knowledge, and it was really, really dangerous. If, if yeah, you're not yeah, aware I, I, and not ready for it. I agree. I mean, it, it, it wasn't good. Um, I can understand that sometimes the, the weather is very difficult to predict, but I think uh, the forecasting was so inaccurate um, it, it, that the forecasters should have given a caveat that they were struggling to predict. That would have been nice. Area, if, yeah. if we had seen 10 to 15 knots and a calm sea with a caveat that uh, this was a very difficult time or a very difficult place to predict weather accurately, we would have looked at the forecast more deeply and uh, possibly made alternative, uh, an alternative course. Um, but there we were, we were stuck in it. I, 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 I need to say about the girls now, because uh, that's very important, that, that this is the first offshore passage for, for both girls. Um, Matilda has, has been out of sight of land before, but Amundine hadn't. Matilda's crossed the, crossed the English Channel. But neither of them had done an offshore passage in, in the mid-Atlantic. I mean, that's where we were. And they conducted themselves really well. That they, they, they never missed a watch. Um, they were scared. Oh, uh, yes. The yes. number, number of time I've read the instruction on the life drive, oh, yes. I can't even <laughs> say. And, and I was like, I, I need to be sure yeah. how I can use it. And then I think <laughs> at, the, at the end, how many times I read those instructions, and I looked at her and I was like, oh, I've been doing yeah. the same for yeah. two weeks. And, and I'm like, what's the number four? Is Why is it upside down? <laughs> <laughs> and then thinking, if we need to take the life raft, I need to take this and this and this. And planning everything in your head just in case. And of course it didn't happen. No, that, that's, that's right. Well, the thing is that, that being a little scared is sometimes good. Um, it keeps you sharp. It oh, keeps yeah. you sharp. And, and you mustn't get complacent with this sort of weather because that, that's when you have a problem. But the, the girls behaved and, and conducted themselves in, in the most superb manner. Um, it, it was absolutely brilliant. I mean, they were brilliant on their watches. And when something was needed, I needed a hand maybe changing a sail um, because the weather had changed very quickly and, we, we, and unexpectedly we'd need to change the head sail and uh, obviously needed one or two more people in the cockpit. They were there like a shot. Never questioned, never questioned anything. It, it, it was great. I mean, we had the most brilliant passage from the point of view of teamwork. Um, I the weather agree. forecasting was rubbish. Thank you, Predict <laughs> Wind. Yep. Um, but, uh, but, but, but after that, the teamwork was superb. And you girls, I, I would sail anywhere with you two girls because it was, you no, know, you were really good. Yeah, I would sail anywhere with you because yeah. you're just. Oh, well, you're very kind. I mean, Thank I, I think I would, I would we uh, made a, happily. We made a good team. Yeah, I would happily trust with my life uh, John and Amandine inclusively because she was brilliant. Really. Yeah, she was For brilliant. someone that uh, was, if, is, it was her first crossing, as John said, I did uh, England to south of France, so English Channel and Bay of Biscay in the winter. So that was also quite a bit of an experience. Um, so I already had, it was not 
as big and it was not as offshore as this one, but already had a tad of experience. Uh, but for a first crossing, I mean, wow, I, I got <laughs> super impressed. She was always on, she was always taking care of both of us. Yeah. I mean, we were all taking care of each other, but she was, she was really, I, I'm impressed. I respect a lot what, you, what she did. Okay, so we move on to the final thing now. Now, uh, we've got a very big announcement to make now. Um, it will come as quite a, a shock to a lot of people, but uh, uh, both these girls are getting married. <laughs> and, uh, well, not to each other. Oh, no. I know. Now, I'm not quite... I already have I'm ready. Ready. <laughs> Is it on the left or on the right? <laughs> I'm not quite sure how this is going to work. Um, but there's a bit of a competition going on because they're both getting... They're, 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 they're both getting married to the same... Yeah, but I know... She chose me. Yes. No, no, I'm talking about you. I'm no. not talking about you. I'm talking care. about my future wife. Yeah, that's right. So tell us who you're getting married to, you two girls. I'm marrying Heidi. She's called Heidi. She's oh, called my Heidi. God, yes. She didn't understand. She no, didn't. No, she wasn't why I'm going to marry Heidi. Yeah. I, I, no. No, you forgot about her. Yes, but I, I was the first one that did a love declaration to her. Yeah. So, so, that, that so who is Heidi? Oh, Hydra Bay. H Heidi the Hydrovane and, and Heidi are Hydrovane now for those who are not sailors Hydrovane is, uh, is the automatic steering that's on the back of the boat and it doesn't use electric it's just driven by the wind and it means that we don't have to sit in the cockpit steering all the way and both the girls are so in love with it it steered every inch of the way didn't it we yeah. didn't have to steer I once. think just once she couldn't cope with the weather yeah. for like a Two seconds, seconds, yeah, yeah. and then it, and we corrected, once. and it was fine. And then, as I said, I did a crossing myself before, and we didn't have it. And I spent a week hand steering, always, 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 always. And when you hand steer for quite a long time, then I had all my muscles hurting because I mean, with waves and things, it is quite hard sometimes. Um, and I mean, that was brilliant. I'm never doing a crossing without the wind belt self steering. I mean, never, ever, ever again. Yeah. It's it changed your life. There, it's quite an expensive piece of kit. Well, well, actually, it's not expensive. It's quite a lot of money, but it's not it's expensive. Worth it. it is it's worth right. every penny. Every and the Hydra vein is a bulletproof, solid piece of kit that gives you an emergency rudder as well in case anything goes wrong with your main rudder. And she is a super, super, super piece of kit. And whether it was very light winds or very strong winds, she just coped and steered the boat day after day, hour after hour, beautifully. So it's getting dark, we're here on the pontoon, and it's time for us to go and eat. So we're going to kind of end here now. And um, we're, we're, we're going to post this, and then we'll follow it up with uh, lots of footage of, of our trip and uh, show you some of the things that went on. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook. We are posting regularly. And uh, there's a new video every week. I mean, exception. We never had exception, but it might be at some point that we don't uh, have the time because we're in a crossing, a long crossing or something like that. But we are keeping everyone informed and post regularly. So please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button because that every like and every subscribe helps us. You don't imagine how much and helps us to continue the, this project and continue to, to show us what we're doing and, um, and keep a dream. And ask your question, share your comments and you also if you did some crossing or everything just was it the same for you or yeah. was it easier? Just Any advice as well? We, we really really yeah, yeah. on for it. So yeah, don't okay. forget to hit the like, hit the subscribe. And, and